right, so to really showcase the uses of a drone in terms of historical conservation, I've come out here today to an abandoned World War II radar station. Now this site is on a um, national park property, so there will be no metal detecting or anything of that kind. Now I've obtained special permission from National Parks and Wildlife Services to use the drone today. With drone use, there's a whole nother lot of rules and regulations you've got to learn and be aware of. Um, there are plenty of resources out there, apps, webs websites, YouTube series, um, that focus on Australian laws when it comes to drone use. Uh, so really make sure you read up on that before you get out there um, so you don't get yourself into trouble. So anyway, let's get this thing set up and in the air. All right, so as easy as that, the blades are on, we've got the controller out. One of the great things about consumer level drones is um, they're just compatible with your phone. So today we will be using the DJI Phantom 4. Um, I've had this one for a few years now and it works great. Uh, 4K footage, excellent stability, um, object avoidance, you know, everything you really need to um, get great footage and not run into anything. So um, anyways, we're all set up now. It's easy as that. Let's get the battery warmed up and um, send it up. Then we open the DJI app, and of course I've got the permit from National Parks and Wildlife. I've checked that there's no aerodromes, like airports, heliports, anything like that, within 5.5 kilometers, I believe it is. Uh, but there are apps that tell you if you're all good. And now we press go fly. Great thing to bring with you um, whenever you are flying a drone is a pair of sunglasses, because looking up in the sky to make sure there's nothing around um, can put strain on your eyes. So there we go, you can see the radar station just there, so we'll fly over to it. And uh, I have a few uses for owning a drone. Um, the first is the videography and like cinematic aspects of it. I just like uh, getting drone footage. It brings another perspective to the video. Um, you can get a bird's eye view, some really wide shots. Even if I'm lucky enough to have someone with me or take the risk myself, I can get some shots of the drone following me. Uh, when I'm detecting, just adds new aspect to the video. But in this instance, I'm going to be showing you how you can use a drone to better your metal detecting uh, or uh, use it as a way, a tool of historical conservation. We're heading over to the radar station now. As you can see, there's two buildings there, uh, both of concrete construction, pretty straightforward. So from the eyes of someone that's interested in historical conservation and uh, preserving the past, you could get images from here, as you can see I'm recording. Um, or you could do a 3D scan, which we'll be doing in just a bit. Now, in terms of metal detecting, we're gonna take this up a bit higher now, so we can get a better view of the site. Of course, staying below 120 meters, because that is the law. 118, get very close there. So as we can see, we've got the two buildings there, and then um, you can see all the different paths and that kind of thing, and then the darker shaded areas. Now, from this view, you get a much better idea of your surroundings and uh, possible surrounding sites that could be of interest. And as we can see, there's some more darker shaded areas. Now the good thing about this and compared, uh, compared to say Google Maps is this is more interactive. If you see a spot that you wanna get close up to or get different angles of, you literally just move the controller and you're there. Now looking around, there is a bit of a mound just over here. So I'm gonna fly over to that right now. So say you're in a farm field or something, or in like a really, really large, wide open area or forested area, um, you could fly your drone around. You've got about a half an hour of battery. Bring a couple of batteries with you. You can fly for an hour and a half. Get an understanding of different sites. Maybe you can find some old chimney stacks or follow an old uh, dirt road somewhere, a trail that you think could lead somewhere. So just over here, there looks like there's a, a sectioned off area of trees and um, another larger, amount of lantana or whatever that is so that could definitely be worth um, having a bit more of a closer inspection if this wasn't national park and it was a public reserve say state forest something like that um, and i had the, the appropriate permits i'd definitely be checking out these areas so anyway there's an overall look at um, how you can use drones as a way of sourcing metal detecting sites uh, just always keep in mind, make sure you have permission to be flying there. If it's not a public property or if it is restricted airspace, make sure you are allowed to be detecting there if that's your intention. So I'm going to bring this drone back now and I'm going to show you how we can use it as a way of 3D scanning a site. Okay, so the next app we're going to be opening now is called Pix4D Capture. Um, and this is a bit more advanced uh, in comparison to the standalone DJI app. Uh, but, but what you can take from it is, um, is definitely worth learning uh, the software. So for this, we're gonna go with double grid, which is for 3D models, as it says. 
Uh, we're not going to go there. We're going to find our location in the bottom left there. And then move our grid over to the site of choice. You want to realign your grid um, to over the site you want to scan. Uh, it's pretty simple, uh, very user friendly. And uh, basically you just press start when you're ready to go. Then just press start and then we're all good to go. Look, no hands, the drone takes itself off. And there it goes. And then um, it's really great on the screen, you can see exactly where the drone is over the map overlay. And um, it does show you as it's taking the images, where it's taking the images. Um, now, the first time I used this, it was very intimidating. I thought I'm gonna have to stitch all these images together, but um, you download the beta version of the software, you can run it all through, and uh, it really is quite impressive. So let's head home now to the computer. We'll get all these images imported, and I'll show you what we do next. All right, back home now, and it's time to start rendering up these images. So first things first, open up the Pix4D mapping software, start a new project, and import some images. And then once they're all loaded up, just press next, and next again, and press finish. And as we can see here, there's a map that's been generated um, with all the image locations on it. You press start. Um, just as a, a heads up, this is actually in 70 times speed. So uh, it does take quite a long time and you can you know, do whatever you want because it's going to take about an hour to actually process. And then once it is done processing, we've got this quality report here and uh, just has a few images and other data that has been gathered. And as we can see here, here's a very basic model of what the end products can look like. Then we'll just deselect the cameras there to get a better view and press start once again. And close this, you don't really need to know anything about that. Once again, we'll close the cameras and turn on point clouds. And then we have a bit better detail, but to get the most detail out of it, you'll want to turn on triangle meshes, which will just fill in those gaps. And there we go. Now, as you can see, it's not the, the greatest model. There are you know gaps in it and there are imperfections. One way to deal with this would be to either do multiple um, images of the site, so multiple runs of the software, or just taking images from a lower altitude. Um, in this one, I did go 44 meters above the ground, uh, but depending on trees and buildings and power lines, you could go um, even lower than that. So there are definitely many ways to increase the detail um, in, your, in your render. Now finally, I'm going to put together a small video animation just to show you the, the lengths at which you can go with this software. So anyway guys, I hope you, you found something of value in this. As always, there's links to all products used in the description and um, I'll see you in the next video.